We'll call the uh, committee of the whole meeting uh, to order. It is now 6.35 p.m. This uh, meeting will be audio and video recorded. Any additions to the agenda? Uh, uh, if I may, uh, Chair Holoka, if you could please get a mover and a seconder for the acceptance of the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a mover for the acceptance of the agenda? His Worship. Seconded by Deputy Mayor <coughs> Miskamez. Vote. 5 0. -oh. Thank you. A declaration of pecuniary interest. Does anybody have one? No? Okay. Deputations to Committee of the Whole open. We have a 20 minute allotment. Uh, thank you, Chair Holoka. We do not have any um, open deputations tonight. Okay. So finally, deputations to Committee of the Whole scheduled. We have uh, Mr. Chapman. You are up. Good evening. Uh, lovely to uh, meet some new faces on council. Been here a few times with a few other faces there, but uh, great to uh, meet you, shake your hands, talk to you a little bit, and see if I can get you all wound up about the Terry Fox run like I'm wound up about the Terry Fox run. And I've tried it out on a few of you already, and it, it's going quite well. So um, oh, could we get to slide one there, Laura, please? I'll, I'll go quickly through this. I know it's a, a little late and uh, we'll, we'll move along. You can see the picture of Terry there, familiar image on that slide. Uh, I was just like that, by the way. It was, but it was 50 pounds and 50 years ago. Uh, he looked damn good and I'm still working at it. I'll take you through a little bit through uh, last year, what went right in my mind, the, the highlights talk a little bit about what we're going through this year. And a couple of things are just ideas and concepts I've got that I'm working, and I really wouldn't mind your feedback either tonight or anytime. Just, I, I wanna make this the best ever, and uh, you can help me do that. The theme this year at a national level is Dear Terry, and it's all about shirts like this, and it's about all the kids that wrote handwritten notes to Terry as he was going across the country. Uh, we've had a ton of them read to us by his brother. His oldest brother has been here a couple of times. And uh, it just, it does tear your heart out, but it also makes you open your wallet and give to this very, very good cause. So what, what's happening this year is we're inviting everybody in Canada, everybody in the world, in fact, to go into a web-based application and write your note to Terry. It's between you and Terry, but it's going public. Everybody can read it. And I think it's gonna be very, very powerful. So stand by for that. We'll let you know how to do it shortly. <laughs> um, and then I'll just close with how you can help. You can help, and I'll, I'll ask you to do that, personally or as a group. So we can go forward, Laura, please. This is my money chart, so the, the blue st stands off to the side there. They're the flow of what's happened with us money-wise that we contribute into the foundation every year. And we took a dip there, oh, about uh, nine, ten years ago. Things got pretty tight and everybody was back and away. And then we started moving uphill again. Uh, and I'm delighted, and I'll tell you our headquarters is delighted, with that as a trend chart. We've uh, hit last year $107,000 that we made in that, and I call it one day, it's actually a year, but to the average person who's participating, it comes down to about three hours. In those three hours, we're getting $107,000 that we donate every cent of it, every cent of it to the foundation. We have a budget of absolutely zero, 
we have to have everything donated that, that we get, and then we give it all away back to the to so that it will get in the hands of some researchers and save some lives. My little chart off to the the uh, right hand side of that chart with the umbrellas. That's the years it rained badly and tried to wreck our time, but it didn't. We still got some great, great numbers despite the rain. Terry fa Terry's fans are Terryaholics, and they're gonna go no matter what. I pulled in there last year, I will just tell you that little story, at about 6.30 in the morning, I was the first guy there, and it's pouring rain, absolutely pouring. It's still dark, out. and I'm sitting there by myself saying, what the, am I going to do today? You know, we're going to have 800 people arrive here pretty soon, and I don't know what the heck to do with them. We, we got, God smiled, the skies opened, and by nine o'clock we were clear and good for the rest of the day. But uh, we had that, the other sign that's on that chart is the overlay of COVID. It had a little impact on us, as you can see, we dropped 20,000 bucks of income right off the bat. But we've got it back, and we're higher than we've ever been. I think it's just a phenomenal thing that we should be all incredibly proud of, is how this community has given and given and given. And uh, some of the statements I've got over to the other side there. If you look, national income last year, 22, was over $30 million. That includes the kids' runs. I don't. I don't lead the kids' runs. I'm leading the adult one here. But thirty million dollars, and we're gone. But we've now got more income coming than we had pre-COVID. So we lost some ground during COVID. We're higher than ever again now. Our team here locally. I mentioned the hundred and seven thousand. That makes me smile like a madman. I love it, and we're going to keep growing that and growing that. But that gave us 11th, we were the 11th highest donating unit in Ontario out of almost 200. Fantastic story. Like, we're the most that roared here. Like, we're, we're given a lot, and I'll tell you, we are very respected for it. We were fifth in the sale of merchandise. And these are not per capita numbers, I'm telling you. They're the gross numbers, right? So just a phenomenal story, I think. Um, we had over 100 items donated to our auction, our online auction last year, and we made over 10,000 bucks off that. It didn't cost us a cent, just perfect. We've now, if you want to look back, since we started with our first run here in 1983, three years later than Terry, we've donated $2.4 million into research. This little community has donated $2.4 million. It's just a fabulous story. Be proud of it, but let's keep it going and make it bigger and better. Okay, Laura, I got half the things off my chest right there. Um, just some other non-numeric things that were features last year. We outsourced a whole bunch of stuff. I outsourced, uh, I'll use that term, but all the sound management, microphones, amplifiers, all of that kind of stuff. And we used to turn to, to Benita and Tim and to help us do all this stuff. We had a, a rock band called the Renaissance Band come in. They not only played a gig for free and gave us all their money, they provided the sound system for the whole event for free all day. And they did it totally out of their pockets. And guess what? They're coming back this year. They want to do it again. Uh, so I love that. Last year, we added some what we called roamers. And these were folks who went out looking for trouble in one area of our run route. We go through the, the, the subdivision behind Perkins Field. And we have to be very careful going there because we've got people trapped, virtually trapped, for a couple of hours, you can't get in or out. Um, so what we did was we put in these roamers, two of them, and they go looking for trouble, and they're looking for people who need to get out or need to get in. And I mean need, not just I want to go buy a pack of cigarettes, but I need to go to the hospital. They will escort the people to the edge 
of where we've got things barricaded off and say, and just take that worry right off their minds. We added that last year and it was a big, big feature and we will keep that up again. Um, we did some great stuff with fire department last year. It helped us with resources to help us with parking and we put in some new concrete barriers around the, the parking area to make sure it was safer for kids as well. So that, and that was a nice enhancement. Food, I always think, is a great attractor. So free food is a wonderful attractor. We had so much food given to us. Uh, Tim Hortons gave us 400 cups of coffee, muffins, Timbits, everything we wanted, deliver, you know, right to our site, there you go. When people came in in the morning, start your day with a cup of coffee for free, then go and register. We had 600 hot dogs, 800 pizzas, 600 water bottles, all donated, never spent a cent. And anything that was left over, by the way, went to a shelter or the, the uh, kids' uh, charities areas. Some went to Ukrainian families that were trying to help get settled in this area, but there was no waste. No, no waste at all, and there won't be this year either. Uh, we did an interesting thing with the fire department again. Thank, thank you, Stefan. Uh, well, Councillor Walma helped us get established, and we ran one boot drive together with the fire department outside Super Center. We made something like 1500 bucks in two hours together, and we did nothing but hold out a boot, right? So I love that, and I want to do it again, and I'd like to grow it to include the other partner municipalities we've got around, around us. We've got a winner here, let's leverage it. Um, we, we shortened our auction cycle last year. By making it tighter, we actually got more bids instead of stretching it, so that, that worked. And the thing I spend most of my time doing, I'm not the only guy on the committee, there's 20 of us, but I spend most of my time on promotion, and it's just communicating in every medium to every audience I can think of. Uh, last year, we were very lucky to get uh, Fred Fox, Terry's eldest brother, elder brother. Uh, he came and spent a day with us here, and we ran four different events featuring Fred on one day. That went a million miles. And these guys will do this to help us out. Uh, they want to help us as much as they can. Okay, Laura, we can go forward. I'll speed up here now, folks, a little bit. I, I, this chart just really lays out that we are much more than a run. Uh, and I, I've been with this for a long time. And I'll tell you, I've run into some runs that are nothing more than Let's put on our gym shorts, go over to the, the high school, run 10 laps, and then go home. And that's their Terry Fox run. That is not uncommon. That's quite a common model. We've turned our thing into a day. It's a party. It's got all kinds, it's got activities, it's got food, it's got music, it's got everything, camaraderie, we got it all. So we're gonna keep building on this this year and expand it some more. Laura, please. I told you I'd pick up speed. Um, like I mentioned a minute ago, promotion is the biggest part of this job. Promotion is way harder than putting on the run. Just it, It's just so key. And it's key to every job at, at your level as well. Communication is just everything. So what we did was we broke down all of our audiences, the demographic groups, we know who they are, we, we've got names for most of these people, and we're going to go see them all. You folks are on that list. i got to come see the mayor, see the council, see the BIAs, see the rotaries, all of them, and go talk to them individually. They, they're all our audiences. You might be able to tell I had a sales background. Uh, next chart, please. That was the who, this is the how. So we're, again, taking every single mode we can find to communicate and doing it. One thing we have to always remember here is our headquarters group that are located partly in Vancouver and partly in Toronto think that the world is full of technoids who know how to use technology really, really well. 
We have a whole lot of people in this community that are dying for a newspaper, a hard copy bulletin, uh, what, whatever. So we are trying to appeal to that hard copy audience as well as the e-audience and, and mix those two things together and add all kinds of other things as well. My little joke under the promotion icon there is, we, I've told my team, go right to the cusp of being annoying. Be almost repulsive, but not quite. We don't want to turn people off, but we want them to know they've heard from us. Okay, we can go forward, Laura. Uh, just a cut. These are more ideas that I'm working on right now, but talk to me later if we can't talk now. Uh, I've got the two top guys, they're the two, two Michaels, uh, one the executive director and one the chair of the board, have both offered to come and help us run events for our top uh, money earners, our top recruiters. Uh, and these are great, great guys with their hearts are in this and they want to help us. Michael Rossi, by the way, is a cottage owner in Tiny Township and the chairman of the board. So he is a major contributor to our effort as well. Next one's kind of interesting. We had this, this is the 40th anniversary for the country of Terry's run. We started three years later than the country went. Uh, so we started in, what, 83? And this is our 40th anniversary this year because we started three years later. So I had this idea of why don't we go get the original people who started all this year and let's see if they'd like to come and celebrate with us and we'll celebrate them. And so, believe it or not, we found the list of the 29 runners who were in the very first Terry Fox run here. We don't have their email addresses because they didn't have email. We've got their phone numbers and their names and we're phoning around to people now and sharing these names. We're gonna try and get them. We're gonna, if we get enough of them, and I'm sure we are, we've got about seven now, uh, we will make a fuss on them on video stuff and use it on television, YouTube, et cetera, as promotion material. We'll try and have a round table with them, just get them talking with each other and talking with us. Um, and then we're gonna bring them up on the stage and honor them in some way. They started all this for us. Now let's thank them for that publicly. So I hope you like that idea. I'm gonna be building on it, so we're going there. Another thing we're doing is trying to get more team leaders and fundraisers. So what I've been doing is trying to recruit people who just ended terms as, as you, as counselors. You're a powerful group, you know a lot of people, you've got influence, you've got connections. Um, so I'm recruiting the people that you replaced <laughs> and saying, come and help me recruit more and more people. And as we're doing that, I'm trying to take the next bullet into effect as well. I'm trying to bring some more youth onto our team. We do need people who are technical in nature and aggressive and not afraid to get out there and, and stir things up a little bit. So we are working to attract youth right now, not only as participants, but as volunteers and to replace old dogs like me when I say that's enough. Um, the boot drive I mentioned before, I would just like, frankly, your agreement to, to do it in tiny, but I'll gladly take the onus to go and spread the word and try and get the others to line up too. But let's get this thing really leveraged everywhere. It's a great idea. Let's use it everywhere. Last thing on this list is just, we have lined up now a Terry Fox replica van, the beigey one that he actually went in. We've got them coming to the Canada Day Parade this year. Uh, and we've also lined up with the OPP a uh, classic cruiser from the old days. And most of you will have seen pictures of Terry running uphill after dark with the rain pouring down on him and his van up ahead and an OPP cruiser behind. That's what we're building, is we're gonna simulate that up King Street on Canada Day. And I think that's gonna be terrific. That's some ideas. Laura, I'll try and close kind of quickly here. 
Um, this is the route, a little hard for you to see, but we, we go out the back through the Perkins Field subdivision onto uh, Palm Beach Road. We go all the way up to Schoolhouse Road, take a little left-hand turn, and we do a hook, and we turn around and go right back down the same way we went out. We have a two and a five and a 10K route, depending on your physical fitness and how you feel that day. There's washrooms, there's water dispensers all up the route. It's, it's a really good route. As I mentioned before, we do have to be sensitive to people who live in the most affected areas and we will take care of them um, and we will have a great run. Okay, Laura. Uh, I'm stopping pretty much after this, folks, but when I, I am putting a lot of my personal self into this, I lost a son to cancer, and this is very important to me, and I just answer these questions to myself. Why am I doing this? I'm doing it because Terry Fox isn't the most incredible brand in the world just got credibility and recognizability and impact everywhere. This thing's been going for over 40 years. It's got longevity. It's had 4 million people participate. It's cost, if I put we're different. We are different. We do everything for nothing. We don't charge a cent for anything. We, there, everything is done by, by uh, donation and all the money we get goes into the foundation and then out to the researchers. It's cost effective, over 80% of all the money we raise ends up in the hand of a researcher. And when you do comparisons, by the way, on other charities, they don't quite match some of those numbers. Um, we're making a difference, you gotta feel that when you're involved in this crusade, you are making a difference. The numbers are getting better, they're still shitty, and there's all kinds of areas we have to improve on, but we are making a difference. Things are getting better. And at the bottom, we get lots of benefit out of spend, giving some of this money out of our local territory. We get involved in all kinds of trials and, and access to technology, some of the new technology that's going on, uh, what's called precision medicine. We, we would never be able to do that on our own here. We got to join the big team and be part of it, but still realize some local benefit. And I feel it's there for sure. Uh, the bottom line, folks, it, it helping save lives feels good. So give yourselves a treat. Come and help save some lives. Laura? Uh, last chart, right? second last chart. Folks, I'm just, I think I've said all this. I'd like you to buy some shirts, wear some shirts, name a team leader, form a team, have your own little fundraising event if you want. I just saw Tay announce that they were doing a Tay car wash for a charity. Great idea, go do it. Um, but anything that we can do, it's really quite simple. Follow us on social media, give us something to auction, buy something from us at the auction. Most importantly is commit to be there. If you're there on September 17th, you will be sucked into contributing because it is contagious. I hope it is contagious. And my only little ask here is, I mentioned the, the notion of the boot drives. I'd sure like to partner with Tiny as the lead, the lead ship here and do this across our broader municipal base. Any comments on that? I would be delighted to listen to. And then I think I have a last chart. That's the team that worked on this last year. They're all but one coming back. One person has come down with cancer and is working for survival right now. Uh, and we're, our hearts are in there too. But let's get your pictures up in there next year. The URL's at the bottom there. If you want to register, donate, just about anything in the world, you can do it off that URL. And thank you so much for your time and attention. And I've got some little blue postcards over there with Laura. They've got everything I just took an hour to say boiled down into two sides of a card. It'll save you a lot of time, but grab one on the way out.
And I'd love to stick them around the tiny office when we get into August, if you'll allow me. Thank you. Thank you, Don. That was uh, quite moving, and uh, I'm sure uh, we'll support you uh, as much as we can and you're in Denver. Any questions from Deputy Mayor? Thank you through you, Chair. Don, first and foremost, you're so passionate about this. It comes through. I commend you for all the hard work. I know um, events like this, they're challenging. They take a lot of energy, but uh, proof's in the pudding with the numbers that you're showing and just how much we do. So I, I applaud you for that, sir, and thank you for coming and sharing uh, with us. Um, I do have one little idea. You were mentioning about the youth um, aspect. Um, I'm not sure if you've gone to the high schools at all trying to recruit, but they are required to get 40 hours of community service. And I know there's a bunch in grade 12 that are always struggling toward the end of the year to uh, get these hours in. And given that it happens in September, just at the beginning of the school year, it's a, it's a good opportunity for that. And just on a personal note, I'm happy to help out any way you can. So you need me, you got my number, call me. I'm, I'm there for you, so thank you. Oh, sorry. Not so good kids, and but we use them on the food services area, and they tend to be a, a helpful group there. They're a little awkward to manage, to get from point A to point B, and all of those kind of things. Do you deliver them? Do you leave them on their own to find their way home? But I, I appreciate the suggestion, and we'll, we'll uh, be using it again. I do need to say, by the way, and I didn't get a chance to say this, I owe a whole lot of our success to people sitting around this table, especially this one and this one. They help us incredibly, and I just can't thank you enough. Thank you, I'm done. <laughs> well, well said. We know we have great employees. Um, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Don. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, we have uh, no reports or consultants or third parties, but I do want to mention that um, Royal Victoria Harbor, our hospital was scheduled to do a uh, deputation and Gail Hunt, the uh, president and CEO, uh, had to cancel. So uh, I'm sure we'll hear from her in the future uh, for a reschedule. Um, e no reports of consultants or third parties, like I said. F is staff reports, so I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Woma, move, mover. And Councillor Brunel as our seconder. So, uh, F1, consent items. F11, council members update slash conferences, seminars, and events. F12, assignment sheet 04260233. F13, county council update slash highlights, and that's from April 25th, 2023. F14, Clerk's Report CR 010-23, and that's from April 15th, 2023, the Town Hall Meeting Summary. And uh, F15, Treasury Report TR-007-23-Q1, and that's from April 15th, 2023, F16 Planning and Development Report PD 013 23 20233 or 23, first quarter comparative building permit activity. I'd ask that uh, the following consent on items under Section F staff reports be received as information. Vote. Carried.
And we will move to F2, matters for consideration. F2-1, or point one, planning and development report PD-015-23. It's a zoning bylaw amendment, a temporary use bylaw. North part of lot 24, concession two, 4230 Crossland Road. I need a mover. Deputy Mayor Miskimmons. Seconded Mayor Evans. Voted. Carried. If I may, uh, Chair Aloka? Yes. If you could read the resolution. Sure. In its entirety, thank you. That planning and development report PD-015-23 regarding a proposed temporary use bylaw be received. And that proposed bylaw 23-038 be considered for formal approval at the June 7th, 2023 council meeting to permit a temp temporary agricultural fair on the land municipality known as 4230 Crossland Road as outlined in staff report PD-015-23 for a maximum of three days being August 18 to 20, 2023 inclusive. And now the vote. <laughs> I believe you have your movement or second or you had taken yes. the vote, but I just wanted to make sure you I actually read the resolution. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I have Deputy Mayor Miskamins as moving it, seconded by His Worship Evans, and we voted five to zero. Okay, moving on to, we have nothing uh, from uh, on G for committees, and we have nothing under H for discussion of motions of which notice has been previously given. So we'll continue on to I, which is communications. And we have I.1, which is consent items. I.1.1, Enbridge. Clarification regarding locate charges. We have I.1.2, AMO-2023, AMO conference delegation requests. We have I.1.3 Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit 023 West Nile Virus Program Planning. I.1.4 Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities Bail Reform Resolution. I.1.5 Municipal Property Assessment Corporation annual report, I.1.6, National Chronic Pain Society slash OHIP coverage for chronic pain treatments, I.1.7, Township of Alnwick, Haldema, hyphen N homelessness in Ontario, and I.1.8, Regional Municipality of Waterloo, Protection of Personal Information for Candidates. I.1.9, Township, Township of Pooslinch, hyphen roadside litter on Highway 401. And I.1.10, Township of the Archipelago Road Management Action on Invasive Fragmites. I need a mover. Council. I'd like to pull an item. Oh, would you like to pull it? Which one would you like to pull? Through you, uh, I would like to uh, just pull I-1.6, National Chronic Pain Society. Okay. Is 
Just the one item, I believe. Anything else? Oh, Councillor Brunel? Uh, after uh, our um, interim d director of planning, uh, Ms. Menzies, uh, Mrs. Menzies uh, talked about perhaps, and I think it was brought from council table here, that we should maybe do a delegation at the AMO. It looks like the, the uh, request for delegation is open until June 9th, so should we be pulling this out and talking about this uh, now, or when should we be talking about it? Our ne the yeah, our next council meeting is June seventh. So should we do it at that time, or should we do it now? Like, is it go is is two days prior to the deadline uh, enough time to request a delegation for AMO? I'm not quite sure. But what's if I may, uh, to the chair, it might not be a bad idea to pull the item this evening, and that just gives uh, staff time, depending on what uh, council directs. Um, and actually, um, it won't be ratified until the next meeting, but staff could still um, go ahead and make preparations for it in the meantime. So I'd like to pull that item so for discussion for this for this evening for the delegation at AMO. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brunel. So, uh, minus I.1.6 and... Which one was yours? Uh, I.1.2 um, be pulled. So we have that the consent, I need a mover for that the consent items under section I communications be received as information with the exception of the following items. Mover. Seconded by Councillor Wama. Vote five zero. Okay, so we don't need this one. <clears throat> I want uh, I dot two matters for consideration is not applicable under section J new business any new business sorry if I may council yes. uh, chair Holoka yes. um, you have pulled the two items so um, council may wish to address item one point um, I point one point two the AMO conference delegations before you move on okay thank you as well as the secondary item the National Chronic Pain Society okay. So item 1.1.2, the 2023 um, AMO conference delegation requests. Uh, Councillor Brunel, would you like to open it up for discussion? Yeah, well, we had a pretty good uh, presentation from uh, uh, Director Menzies uh, about this, interim, interim Director Menzies about this, uh, uh, but the changes to the proposed new provincial planning statement and the delegation uh, deputation from uh, Paul Maurice, so I think we, we want to um, uh, apply for delegation uh, to the person, um, <laughs> which minister is, is uh, in charge of this, I'm not quite sure, but I'd just like to, to, to uh, show support um, for our for uh, Director Menzies um, and also Pierre Paul Maurice on on this particular issue, uh, this is a this this is a, a pretty big deal. So I'd like to uh, uh, have direction from uh, from council to for what to do next because I this is pretty well brand new to me. I've never been to a AMO, never been to a, a delegation, so I'm not quite sure what the process is. But I'd like to get this ball ball in motion. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Brunel, Your Worship. Thank you, Chair. Um, I echo uh, Councillor Brunel's uh, interest in the uh, the planning discussion. Um, I think, though, in light of uh, uh, this, uh, I.2 is is all over uh, complete delegation requests. So my suggestion would be to make a direction to staff to uh, to prepare a list of potential delegation topics uh, for the next meeting uh, that we can review, including the planning that we had today, and uh, and make a decision at that time. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else? Councillor Walma? And 
just uh, one of the ones that I'd like to see on that list, and I think we talked about before, would be uh, septic uh, field licensing. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have uh, there's other things that uh, I would say that we we can bring forward, but that's definitely forefront of a lot of our residents minds. Thank you Thank you uh, councillor Alma Deputy mayor. Okay. Thank you Thank you. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Brunel. Seconded by Mayor Evans. That the correspondence from the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, also known as AMO, regarding a request for delegations for the 2023 AMO conference be received and that staff be directed to prepare a list of potential delegation requests, including to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing regarding Bill 97 and the negative impacts on the agricultural industry, as well as a delegation regarding septic field licensing. I have a vote on that. Carried. Uh, any new business? We uh, discussed 1.6. Oh, 1.6, sorry. Yes. The National Chronic Pain Society, OHIP coverage for chronic pain. Deputy Mayor Miskwins. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a big issue facing all communities and people from different socioeconomic backgrounds, and I believe uh, we should uh, be sending out a letter of support as uh, our medical community is overrun and many uh, many doctors are not able to wean people off opioids other than just not renewing prescriptions. And this leads people who have formed an addiction to see, seek opioids off the street. Um, we, have, uh, we need to have our health system provide other means of helping those who suffer from chronic pain receive the treatment they, uh, they desperately need in order to lead a somewhat of a normal life. We know that we're in a crisis situation here and since uh, we are the level of government closest to the people, I think we need to represent our communities and advocate in any way that we can to help stem this, uh, the tide of this, uh, this epidemic. Um, so I would ask uh, for council support that we direct staff to uh, draft a letter in support to be sent to the Premier, our Minister of Health, and uh, Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, and potentially our, also our local MPP um, to support this OHIP coverage for alternative means of, uh, of pain management. Thank, Thank you, you, Deputy Mayor. Anybody else? Councillor Brunel. Yeah, through you, uh, Chair. Um, so the ask is that our council pass a motion requesting that a government of Ontario maintain OHIP coverage for chronic pain treatments. And can you, so, um, uh, so we're not going to do that ask, but we're going to do a letter. That's what the, uh, that's what you're recommending we do? Correct, that we send a letter of support um, as uh, we've been requested through uh, the National Chronic Pain Society. Thank you very much, and I would be fully in support of that letter. Thank you, Councillor Brunel and Deputy Mayor Miskins. So we were we're going to direct staff to prepare a letter for the uh, National Chronic Pain Society in, in support that they continue OHIP coverage. 
for chronic pain treatments. Sure, if I could just have a word on this. Yes, um, sure, Your Worship. You know, I realize that it's a valid cause and everything, but I feel that, um, again, this, we've had other situations with this with requests for endorsements, chronic letters, and things like that. I feel that this is something, this is an issue between the, uh, the Ontario Ministry of Health and the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And even though I, uh, I believe in the end results, um, I don't think, you know, we're open. First of all, I don't know what impact we're going to have on that discussion. Uh, and secondly, I think that we're, again, we're, we're holding out hope and endorsing things that um, us as a township are, are really not uh, going to be able to facilitate any change. So as a result of that, um, I'm going to vote negative on this one. I need a mover. Uh, Deputy Mayor Miskimans. Seconded by Councillor Brunel. And the recommendation is as follows, that correspondence dated May 2023 from the National Chronic Pain Society requesting support of maintaining OHIP coverage for chronic pain treatments be received and that Council direct staff to send correspondence to the Premier, Minister of Health, Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and our local MPP and support accordingly. Can I have a vote? For, against, his worship. The motion is carried. And with that, I need a uh, mover for well, we have no new, any new business anybody want to declare? Okay. Uh, confidential closed session is not applicable. And we're going to go for an adjournment. So I need a mover for an adjournment. Councillor Walma. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Miskimans. Vote. Carried. Five to zero. The meeting is adjourned at 7.24 p.m. That's it. Thank you. We'll get the